My name is Sebastian and today we'll work a little bit more with AI and LLMs and we're going to implement our own MCP server. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol and is a way for the AI tools or AI agents to communicate with our own tools, like things that we can provide. So this is kind of interesting. If you watched my uh, latest video on the Goose AI agent and especially all the tool integration with your computer that it can use, this uses the MCP pro uh, protocol, MCP under the hood, in order to communicate. Now, what we can do is that we can implement our own server for whatever application or tool or technology we have. And this is kind of interesting. So if you have a look at some of the extra implementations out there, and especially for us in the Java world, Quarkus will be interesting and you can actually uh, use Quarkus to implement an MCP server and then implement your own stuff. So if you want to check this out, there is some open source code available, especially here for the um, Quarkus MCP service project and let's say a Kubernetes example for which you can, for example, ask what are the parts on my system? What do I have? Can you, can you please access something and so on and so forth. And if you look over the code, it looks a little bit like, well, has some implementations for, for example, uh, give me the resources uh, of my Kubernetes namespace and so on and so forth. So this is kind of interesting. But I don't want to show you that in action. I actually want to show you some own implementation of a project of mine that is called uh, Favorite Coffee. Maybe you remember this. I also created a video in the past about coffee recommendation with Neo4j, so a graph database, and also Quarkus. And now we can further enhance this to say, okay, we would like to talk to our AI agent and say, can you please recommend certain coffee that coffee beans that taste like certain flavors and so on and so forth in a chat. So this is kind of interesting. Now, if you know this project, this project uses a database, a graph database, Neo4j. So you actually could say, I'm gonna use an MCP server, a server plugin for the Neo4j database itself. So this would also work. This would be a different approach that you say, can you please use this MCP server that then connects to the database directly? So then if you say, okay, please, let's say list all coffee beans, what this MCP server then will do, it will translate that into a Cypher query and communicate with your database, like actually uh, invoking that query and give you the result. So this would work in our case, but I want to make it more specific, which is also going to be interesting for certain projects. And this might be interesting for some uh, companies and projects to implement this for your own tool where you define what is going to be available as tool for this MCP. Okay, so how does this work? Just very uh, briefly, basically what I would uh, like to use is the AI agent. And then this is um, communicating with the MCP server via, well, there are some uh, choices. It's typically stan uh, standard IO or some combination of HTTP um, communication via SSE and service end event and HTTP post. And then you can invoke some actions here. So then the MCP server can do whatever you want. We can implement this using Java and Quarkus, and then it automatically could connect to your database or do some stuff. You could actually also integrate that in your application. But the way how this AI agent uses it, uh, at least as of now, is that the AI agent will start that process. So you will actually issue and configure a command by which this agent can start the MCP server, which is why I'm not including all of that here, but instead I have my favorite coffee project that just will be running via port 8080, and then the MCP server will connect to it also via REST client. Okay, and the database is my Neo4j database here. So that's roughly that architecture that I would like to present to you. And let's have a look at the code, how this looks like. So what I have here, I already have my uh, favorite coffee uh, project running. This is pretty much the same that I was showing in a previous video as a very quick run through. This uses Quarkus with Neo4j, and then you can connect to it on the command line, for example, with a REST client to say, please give me all coffee beans that I have here. 
So basically it gives you a bunch of coffee beans with the flavor profiles and it will tell you, well, what you would like to have. That's kind of cool. And then if we also have a look at um, the browser and the UI that is uh, available there. So you could, for example, see that we have some UI where you can rate beans. And that's also interesting because you can do this via REST and then say, okay, this uh, particular bean with its flavor profile, I like it so, so, or I didn't like. And now we can also integrate this with AI. Okay, cool. How to do this? Well, our project offers all of these things as REST um, endpoints. And now in our MCP server, we're going to use that. So you can check out this code. It's on GitHub. And basically our favorite coffee MCP server, in this case, as I showed in the diagram, that's pretty much just REST client that uh, implements this endpoint for the MCP server. So typically you use these two dependencies. And then also I use a REST client for JSONB mapping and that's pretty much it because it just uses the other project. As I said before, you could put basically everything all in one application, but then this application would also be started by the AI agent as it will see in a second. Okay, so then we do this. We basically have our project here and the interesting part is that class, MCP server favorite coffee that is annotated with these at tool annotated methods. So basically these are the tool definitions, pretty much like methods, functions that can be invoked by the AI. And you have a description where in a human readable fashion, you just say what this should do. Potentially or optionally, you could also give it some arguments. For example, let's start with a very basic one, list all the coffee beans. And then as an argument, you can say you can provide a coffee flavor to filter by if you want. Now that's kind of interesting. If you don't provide this, then it will just try to guess it from whatever prompt uh, you put into the tool. Or in this case, we say we want to be very specific. So that's already kind of interesting what you would like to provide there in order to have more deterministic results. Okay. And then as it will invoke uh, this here, you can say, I would like to have, well, whatever back. In this case, it will be a coffee bean. Why? Because that is the return a value from, in this case, a REST client. This is uh, using MicroProfile REST client in order to access it. And then we have these um, results from the REST me methods available. Okay, cool. Now you could say list all the coffee beans that the user has rated. This basically uses a different endpoint and a different query internally for the database and uh, also coffee bean recommendations that haven't been rated yet, basically that haven't been tried yet. Okay, but then also the interesting part is to provide a method that actually changes something. Now this is gonna be create a coffee bean or order a coffee, or in our case, please rate a bean. So then you really wanna make sure that the tool has the correct data so that all of the input parameters are valid or you could validate them in your code or this really depends what you're trying to do. Uh, but for example, but it is quite smart, I have to say. Um, here it says the UUID of the coffee bean to rate because it has to identify the coffee bean. And as we will see, this is basically a result from the previous result of let's say list all the coffee beans and then take the first one or whatever you have and then it will know or it will guess that the UUID here is um, necessary as well as the rating uh, results where you say okay what does it actually mean so we have an integer here and in our model one means one star two two stars and so on so that's interesting so you can then check out the code, how I wrote this here in these sort of prompts in these descriptions. And then, yeah, we can try this out. So this tool is very simple. Again, you could integrate this in your own application, whatever you have. Uh, for me, this was sort of straightforward to add to this favorite coffee project because we already had all of these queries available. And instead of just having a REST resources or a UI, now you also have the MCP tool approach. 
Okay, cool. Now, how does this work? Basically, you can say if you invoke um, goose session, then you can say dash dash with extension. So that's kind of interesting. Then you basically provide a command here. So it depends. Um, if you have a look at some MCP ex um, examples, there as some code, typically uh, they use some other approaches to to run this. Like typically there are ways, uh, for example, with uh, uh, with a Py uh, Python way to invoke your command. That's basically what it does. You could have this or the Quarkus examples do JBang, which is pretty much also a scripting approach, uh, so, to, uh, so to say, in order to invoke that command. Or you can simply say, for us, it's probably more straightforward to understand as Java developers, java-jar. So you can say, okay, please invoke this java-jar, and then you start up that particular um, process as the MCP server. Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to this directory where we have the target directory of um, our built application. So let's build this again, MCP server that contains this Quarkus project that I just showed you in the code, the POMXML. And again, you can try this out yourself. And what it will do, it will build an Uber jar, the Uber jar for that reason, because then it's easier to start. You just have to provide that fat jar and it will just contain everything. And then we say, goose um, session dash dash with extension and then we provide the java dash jar command with our built application our built mcp server in our case that's target depending on the current directory favorite coffee mcp server jar which now starts goose with that extra extension so it will start actually our mcp server and then it has uh, a method to detect all the available tools what it actually can invoke and now we can we can ask something that will then based on the llm logic maybe need a tool invocation okay let's try this out let's say for example um i want some fruity coffee today what do we have now that's interesting because we say, what coffee do we have? Basically list all the coffee beans, but I mentioned fruity. But here I wrote it in lowercase, but our application needs it in uppercase, which it knows because that, that was part of that description, description prompt of the tool. So it says the available flavors are, and then it lists them here with an uppercase, which is why you see it invoked that method with that correct uh, argument sent, set for the parameter. Okay. I found several, co uh, several coffee beans with f uh, fruity flavor profiles. Perfect beans that are 100% fruity and so on and so forth. And it will tell you, okay, would you like to try any of these beans? I can help you rate them after you try them. Okay, cool. So let's say, well, the second one. Okay, that's one, two, but maybe it, it can guess. The second one sounds nice. Okay, the second one sounds good. And let's say, please rate this. Uh, please rate it with three stars. Okay, now it would first of all need what we re uh, need to know what we refer to, which is here this one. But then also it needs the UUID, which it guessed from the previous result. Okay, cool. Um, okay, here it actually, the second one meant this one, I guess. Um, this can you coffee okay so that was interesting i meant this one which is fine fair enough as a second one so it probably guessed that i wanted that so it took the first one of the second one we can actually double check that uh, by looking at the site what it now rated and it is this one as you can see that now has three stars that was empty before so you saw that actually it invoked the tool and uh, it changed it in the database so that's that. Okay, cool. Fair enough. And now it rated this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say what else can you recommend? Now that's also interesting because it invokes now a different method because I mentioned recommend. There is a method list recommended coffee beans, which are coffee beans that are very likely uh, to our taste, but we haven't rated yet. So something unknown, basically. 
Okay, cool. That's that. Um, so let's say we, uh, we would like to uh, rate more of that with uh, one or two uh, stars. Let's say we do please rate. Now we mentioned a name with three stars and this one with two stars. And also now we're going to uh, write uh, something else. We're going to write uh, earthy. Earthy is not so mine. Now what it will do, it should send two more um, rate invocations too, because it's only a single invocation or a single rating here. Let's see if that was correct. Um, I recorded both ratings. If you, uh, feedback shows a clear preference for pure fruity notes. This will help the system provide recommendations based on these new uh, ratings. Yes, please. So now we have new recommendations and because we updated it, now it will be interesting to see what the LLM does with it. Because now it changed actually uh, with my comment that I don't like the earthy uh, taste, which is now actually the interesting part because this uses a little bit more the LLM, LLM capabilities. What did I just do? I said, okay, please rate this bean and that bean, which updated then the recommendations, which is first of all, just the logic that we have in our graph database and application. But also I mentioned, I, I'm not that much of a fan of earthy nodes, which I just mentioned in the LLM that is not coded in my application, but now it will use it. It will use this, uh, that information uh, with the next commands or with the next results here, because now we see, okay, it actually downgraded these earthy ones because I mentioned it as a comment. So now this will vary from the recommendation that uh, we will have. So for example, we have something that has uh, earthy notes that we, um, that we rated uh, there um, here, for example, but it will down Grade this a little bit and uh, then have some other notes, no earthy tones here, for example, uh, no earthy notes, uh, which then have a higher preference because we mentioned it. So you see that the LLM already tries to sort of incorporate that then with the result that we get back. Okay, anyway, I hope this shows uh, a little bit the capabilities of this MCP approach where we can integrate these AI agents with this MCP, the model context uh, protocol into our applications. It's kind of interesting to have a look at the tooling approach and especially then the integration into our application. If you use Java, especially with Quarkus, that is pretty cool to do so. You can try out the code that I have or just use, use it as some sort of inspiration, which is the favorite coffee project uh, where I have added the MCP server that you can try out yourself. It is also interesting to uh, give it a try for the other MCP uh, projects, for example, the Kubernetes one, or if you use Neo4j, then that's an interesting one. So you can get started uh, there quite quickly by saying, what do I have in my Kubernetes cluster and then take it in from there. So that's kind of cool to play around with it. And I hope that was interesting to watch. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.